you remember when October 7th happened, President Biden, Blinken, all they came in and said, you do what you got to do, Israel. Yes. You go do, you do what you got to do. Within two weeks, it was already starting to crack. It was. And now they are absolutely opposed to what anything is happening to eliminating Hamas. And now they're coming forth and saying, oh, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. What we really meant was, you know, go in there and do a little bit, then get out. And then, by the way, don't build any more uh, settlements. And if you'll remember, during the George Bush administration, there were settlements in Gaza, Mm -hmm. and Israel agreed to get out. They 100% got out. There was not a single Jewish person. There is not a single Jew living in Gaza, but there are multiple Palestinians living in the rest of Israel. Yes, of course, and have been for a long time, even in the walled city in Jerusalem. Yes. They have shops. They live together. They work together. They've, you know, at least those have found a way to be peaceable with each other for the sake of their families because they're all crammed right there in, you know, the confines of Jerusalem. But here's here's an observation that I want to make. Obviously, we've had Netanyahu say, want them all out, every last one of them. Uh, Egypt's right across the border. They don't want to take them. Right. Then do you not have Jared Kushner and mm-hmm. Osama bin uh, help me Salman? out? Salman? I don't know. How bin Salman? Bin Salman. Um, I don't know how to say his name. That are they not trying to develop this ocean front property even yeah. all the way down into Gaza? Yeah. So you're talking about Saudi Arabia. Gaza has beautiful beachfront. Sure. How valuable! That could be a resort. How, how valuable this property must be! You've got a lot of uh, irons in this fire. You got a lot of hands yes. working, and so what is about to happen and in our country? You know, here we are, just trying to tell everybody what to do all over the world, like we've always done. Yep. Um, not wanting to accept the fact that we're a paper tiger and nobody respects us anymore, mm. and it's all crumbling. The ground is crumbling underneath our feet. So. What is about to happen over there? Yeah, I want to read this one last statement, this this uh, tweet, X, whatever you call it, from Mike Pompeo. This just sort of sums it up, and I agree with him. Judea and Samaria are rightful parts of the Jewish homeland, and Israelis have a right to live there. President Biden's decision to overturn our policy and call Israeli settlements illegal will not further the cause of peace. It rewards Hamas for its brutal attacks on October 7th and punishes Israel instead. These Israeli communities are not standing in the way of peace. Militant Palestinian terrorism is. I mean, you that's spot on, in my opinion. Spot on. I believe that. And still the tunnels are not all destroyed, and, and still the hostages are not all released, and this thing goes on and on and on. And it has so many layers. Yep. How is a resolution going to be found? Right, right. Mm. Well, you know, you not only have the what's going on in Gaza, you have that other people have joined the fray, and the Houthi rebels and the Houthi uh, Muslims are really stepping it up. Yeah. And this is just some of the things that you can do when you have a lot of money backing you. Absolutely. Right. <laughs> so get ready for this next story. <laughs> yeah. Wow. You, I wonder if you heard this on the news. Mm. Reports are coming out that the Houthis, uh, the Muslims there, they're known as the Houthi rebels, but the Houthi Muslim terrorist group, uh, has now severed one of many. We talked about this the other night. This is not the main one. This is but a huge one. Has severed undersea communication cables linking Europe and Asia. Wow. The Iran-backed Houthi terrorist group knocked out four undersea communication cables linking Saudi Arabia and Djibouti. A report by an Israeli news outlet claimed Monday the, the submarine cables were struck out uh, struck out of commission through the sabotage in recent months, alleged Israel's news outlet Globes. Mm-hmm. Telecom firms linked to the Yemen government have previously said that they fear Houthi rebels are planning to sabotage a network of seafloor cables in the Red Sea, critical to the co- functioning of the Western Internet and the transmission of financial data. Ladies and gentlemen, these it's so easy. It's so easy for people that are watching in America, Europe, yeah. and different places of the world 
to think that's the Middle East. I mean, it's always been like that. But you're talking about you sever these cables? Yes. These cables. By the way, everybody, we've been trained to think the Internet. Come on. It's just out there. And it's, it's just the satellite. It, it's satellite. It's in the air. No. no, it travels globally still on cables. The entire ocean is filled with cables. There's cables. They're trying to make take the shortest route, but they can't just have air delivery of the internet and depend on that when that mm-hmm. can just be blocked by a solar flare or something. The internet's functioning database, I should say infrastructure, is still wired. Sure. And 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 many of these go across this Red Sea, of which the Houthi Rebels is shooting ships in the in the Red Sea. And now sure. they're going underneath and cutting cable sandy that could create more chaos than bombs. And you know, we don't think about this. Quite frankly, I'm sitting here going through my mind. Have I seen this in a movie before? Have we seen a James Bond or some kind of movie where, you know, some bad actors were attacking some important infrastructure like that? But most of the bad things that we see happening, we've already seen in the movies. Yeah. Oh, oh, but, yeah. So that's why I'm saying that. But yes. We are so distracted and we're so just all over the place. We don't think about the basic infrastructure right. that, like you said, these we're relying on just hard wiring and cables, yep. not just full satellite communication. Right, exactly. Um, and and look, let's go back to this article. So I, I want to dig down just a little bit further here. It says the AAE-1 cable. Listen to this. Connects. This is the data point that connects East Asia to Europe via Egypt, connecting China to the West through countries such as Pakistan and Qatar. The Europe-India gateway cable connects Southern Europe to Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Djibouti. What what in the world? Never heard of Djibouti. Have you ever heard of Djibouti? Am I saying that right? Uh, I think I'm saying it right. Is that just Djibouti? Djibouti? <laughs> Djibouti. <laughs> I think you're right. But, uh, <laughs> so. Did you? Okay, I so the, you're. I think the D is solid. You're giving us a breakdown <laughs> of these different cables. Which one did it say was cut? These are all, these were all cut. So all of these, these were. These are four cables. These so, are all the four. Wait, let me finish this and then okay. you make that comment. The CECOM cable connects Europe, Asia, and is connected to South Africa. Meanwhile, the immediate harm will be felt by Gulf states, India, all of these. So there were four cables. Now, go ahead with your thoughts. I was just going to say, can you understand what all and who all and how this would affect them? In your mind, are you understanding? Let's just break it down right here. It's one of the cables connects China with the West. Yes. I want you to think about that. Something happens. China launches an attack or looks like it's going to launch an attack. They get they get record. They get a notification that missiles are being armed towards Taiwan or something like that. And America or someone in the West is trying to communicate with China yeah. and to try to stop a World War III, and they can't communicate. Then you've got all these other countries that we just listed that can't communicate because so many things now are communicated through internet. Now, of course, I know they have backup systems, but the the quickest way is they want to be able to track things, data points, all this kind of stuff. So, yeah, this is just the Houthis just saying, "Hey, we're gonna we're gonna show we're gonna make Israel pull back out of Gaza." This is what this is all about. But there are other forces that are in place saying, "What's coming? What we've got planned? World War Three? This is a part of the chaos part of that movie, Leave the World Behind, and the real world that we're living in. That's what this is a part of. This is the disruption of communication in the midst of chaos. Okay, so I don't know if this article is the same as another one that I was looking at earlier. Go on. Now we we know what has happened. Well, somebody would say, well, just fix it. Just go fix it. (laughs) So— does this article go on further to say that there are limitations <laughs> to, you know, okay, well, we need to talk let's, about that. Let's look at this. Let's look at that. Talk, speaking of the terms yes, that you're talking yes. about. The repair of such a large number of underwater cables may take at least eight weeks, according to estimates, and involve exposure to risk from Houthi terror organizations. Hello. So you go down there and start trying to 
fix it, you're going to get killed. Yes. The BBC reported earlier this month, Yemen's legitimate UN-recognized government in Aden, blah, blah, blah. The warning came after a channel link that the Houthis on the Telegram messaging app posted a map showing undersea cables routes in the Red Sea. These are fiber optic cables. Have you ever seen a fiber optic cable? It is like a hair. Mm -hmm. And and if you ever see, if you ever hear of a truck or something running into, in our country, I've seen this happen a couple of times, where they run into a substation on the side of the road that's filled with all these uh, fiber optic cables that are feeding the homes. I've seen that happening a lot lately, to be honest with you. Yeah, (laughs) exactly. And what happens then is everybody's system's down. For a long time, because it's not just like, you know, cutting a wire and putting a wire nut on it. I mean, these are thousands of little tiny wires that have to be connected. So you're saying it's intricate work. It's got to be done probably under the water unless in cases you can bring it up, repair it, drop it back down. Are there limitations on what insurance providers are willing to do to let to allow people to go out there no, no. and to cover them. I thought I was even reading an element of that in another story. But this is just crazy, okay? It's off the chart. You're going to cause this damage. God only knows when or how it's going to be able to be fixed. And the a number of people that it could affect and the types of situations that it could affect. Yeah, yeah. I mean, oh, it's this is huge. as if we didn't have enough chaos Already. Yeah, but look, let's go back to the fact this is war. war. And in war, people do things to harm other yes. countries' ability to do war. Sure. And so the Houthis are thinking, hey, we, you know, everybody, all these people that are supporting Israel, well, guess what? We'll just turn your internet off. We'll turn your communication off. We'll create chaos. And then you come back and then you put your boats in the Red Sea and we'll shoot them with missiles and we'll sink them mm-hmm. or we'll send out. Uh, rebels to board the ships and take over them. I mean, it's just uh, the Red Sea. Come on. The thing that Moses parted and walked across, the Red Sea is a place of terror. It is the Houthi rebels have it completely on lockdown, and now they're cutting cables. But but if you remember, right here on the big picture, it was the last week or the week before, when we didn't even think about there were multiple cables down there, the largest communication Internet cable in the world that communicates one side of the world to the other goes through the Red Sea as well. And they cut that one. They cut that one. If they do, I don't know if mm. they will, because if they if they do that, they, they there might be nations declare war against Yemen if they do that. Because, yeah. because one of the things, think about it before we move off this article that's, that we just read, is that many of these cables are used for financial trades between countries, money. You want to start affecting people's money, it's going to get ugly exactly. quickly. Exactly. But, you know, before we move on, let's just touch on how many different countries are represented parked out in that water right now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Multiple countries have sent fleets, you know, over there. And uh, yep. it's crazy. You're right. You're right. You're right. Thank you for watching this clip from The Big Picture. If you'd like to watch the full show, click here. If you'd like to watch more content just like this, breaking news and more, click here. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel by clicking here. Thank you for hitting that subscribe button. Thank you for hitting that like button. And we'll see you next time on The Big Picture.